So thank you so much for attending tonight. This is the Smeal Career Prep presentation for Penn State Harrisburg campus freshmen and sophomores. So hopefully you are all in the right place. I know there's a lot of Zoom links floating around these days. So before we even get started, there are two ways um, that you are welcome to ask questions during this presentation. If you would prefer to unmute yourself and ask a question verbally, that is totally fine by me. Or if you would rather put a question into the chat, you're more than welcome to do that. So either or. All right, so we will go ahead and get into it. So first and foremost, before I go over the agenda and the actual content of the presentation, yes, I see in the chat somebody's asking, do we have access to this recording? Absolutely. So if you would like this recording, please send me an email after the presentation, and I'm happy to send it right over to you. And you can find my email here on the screen. Okay, so my name is Maria Walls, and I want you to just know who I am and know what I do so that you have context as to where this information is coming from and who it is coming from. So, like I said, my name is Maria, and I am an employee in the Business Career Center, which is the career services office that's housed in the Smale College of Business at the University Park campus of Penn State. So my role specifically is the Change of Campus Program Coordinator. So what I do with this role is I work with Commonwealth campus students who are looking to transition to the Smale College of Business and make sure that they are completely prepared for everything career prep related. So for the big junior and senior career searches, I just try to make sure that they're ready for them um, and that they're doing the right steps their freshman and sophomore years. So there's multiple ways that you can reach out to me if you ever have questions and you need help with anything career related. The first, like I said, is my email that you can find here on the screen. You're welcome to email me really anytime to ask anything at all. Um, no question is too small. Please, please reach out to me over email. And then if you would like to talk to me one on one and have um, a more in depth conversation than what an email can handle, you're more than welcome to schedule an appointment with me. While you are still at the Commonwealth campuses, you're welcome to do that virtually over Zoom. We're all comfortable with Zoom at this point, so please feel free to schedule an appointment. And then if and when you do transition to the University Park campus, I'm also available for in-person appointments whenever those come back um, within our arena at Penn State. And then in addition to that, I'm also available for drop-in appointments tonight from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time after this presentation. So if this presentation, you know, gets the wheels turning in your brain, if you'd like to talk about anything one-on-one, -on -one, um, more than what you're comfortable just asking during the presentation itself, then please come to drop-in appointments. I'm happy to talk to you. All right, so going into the actual agenda of this presentation and just giving an overview as far as what we're going to be talking about. First and foremost, we are going to be talking about key career resources. So at Penn State, you have a lot of resources available to you to help you with your career search and your career prep process. So it's critical that you know of these resources and you know where to find them and you know how they can help you. And then second, we're gonna be talking about how to maximize your first and second years at the Harrisburg campus to ensure that when you transition to University Park, that you're as prepared as possible for the junior internship and the full-time job search process that happens your senior years. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, the transition from Harrisburg to University Park for students who complete the two plus two program can be pretty overwhelming. You know, you're gonna be in a new place, taking new classes, meeting new people, getting adjusted to a new dorm or apartment. And it's quite the transition, of course, so I want you to at least have one less thing to worry about, and that would be everything related to your career. So that's why I'm giving you the information now, so you can complete the necessary steps so that junior year, you're ready to hit the ground running. So I see somebody in the chat asking where are drop-in appointments hosted? That's a great question. So in the email, in the marketing email that I sent out about this event, you were able to find the presentation link. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you can find the link for drop-in hours. That being said, if you can't find it for some reason, feel free to send me an email and I can send you the link and we can talk after this. Okay, first and foremost, talking about key career resources. So as a student at the Harrisburg campus, your main 
career resource is the Career Services Office. So this is located in the Student Enrichment Center in room 212. So if you have never accessed this office, I cannot recommend enough having at least two touch points with them, once your freshman year and once your sophomore year. This office is filled with great people who are willing to help you with anything and everything that you need to make sure that you are prepared for the big internship and job searches your junior and senior years, and just to make sure that, you know, you're being well served as a freshman and a sophomore. So, of course, you want to be getting involved, getting great experiences on your resume, and the Harrisburg Career Services Office would be just who you need to talk to about this type of stuff. So, you know, let's say you want to get involved in some student organizations, but you don't know where to start, you don't know what would look good on a resume, talk to this office. Let's say you're looking for a job in the local Harrisburg area, maybe you're looking to get some volunteering experience, talk to this office. So, at least one touch point per year and just utilize them for whatever you need because they are available to you. Okay, so if and when you decide to transition to the University Park campus, there are two key offices that will be available to assist you with your career search process. So the first is the Business Career Center. Like I mentioned before, this is the office that I work in. And this is the Career Services Center that's specific to the Smill College of Business at University Park. So that being said, just because it's housed within the Smill College of Business, doesn't mean that this office is not accessible to you as a Commonwealth campus student. So we are here to serve SMEAL undergrads and also SMEAL tracking Commonwealth campus students. That's why my position was created to assist Harrisburg students and students at the other campuses. So please, please feel free to utilize this office now and in the future after transition. And so giving you a little bit more context initially on the BCC, the Business Career Center. What's nice about this office is that it's business specific career information. So we have the expertise on business internships, companies that are looking to hire business students, how to create a business resume, et cetera. So if you're ever looking for business specific expertise and info, I would definitely talk to the SMIL BCC. Then at University Park, we also have a general career services office available, and this is available to students of all majors, minors, certificates, and all colleges on campus. And this is Penn State Career Services. I usually call it Penn State BOA just because it's in the Bank of America building and it's easy for me to remember. So Penn State BOA, like I said, is available to serve all students. So this office would be helpful for you to access if maybe you're double majoring and your second major is outside of the College of Business and you need perspective on that, maybe you are still planning to be a business major, but you're looking for career paths that are not as traditional as one might expect for a business major, then Penn State Career Services would be great to talk to you. You know, let's say you are a finance major, but you're planning to go to law school, then Penn State Career Services, Penn State BOA would be perfect for you to talk to. So like I said, these are the two general offices that will be available to you at University Park and also right now as a Commonwealth campus student. Okay, so talking about the SMEAL Business Career Center a little bit more specifically, just because for most of you, this is the primary office that you'll be accessing. There are three umbrellas under which we operate as an office. So the first is career coaching. So I believe at this point we have six career coaches in the BCC. That's one of the roles that I have. So I would be a career coach. And we are available to meet with students in one-on-one -on -one appointments. So this could be to talk about really anything and everything related to the career search process. So it could be working on documents like resumes or cover letters. It could be preparing for interviews or preparing to network at career fairs. Maybe you have two great offers from two different companies and you're not sure which one to pick, we can help you make those pro and con lists and figure out what your gut's telling you. So really we're just available to give you insight and help and expertise on all career coaching topics. Then we also operate under the umbrella of employer connections. So I like to think of us as the middle person between companies and students. Because at the end of the day, students are looking for jobs. So we try to connect companies with students who are searching. And then companies are looking for business students to hire. So we try to locate those students who would be perfect at their company. 
So we facilitate those relationships in a variety of arenas, and that plays into our last umbrella, which is professional development events. So here in the Smoke College of Business and in the BCC more specifically, we host so, so many professional development events. It could be something as small as a workshop, learning how to create a cover letter, or it could be something as big as a career fair that has 60 different companies coming. So like I said, we just try to connect students with employers and facilitate ways that they can network, connect, and hopefully leverage those into long-term relationships or potential job offers. I do want to make another point about professional development events before we move forward. So one of the very few, I suppose, silver linings of this pandemic is that all Penn State operations have been moved online, at least for the most part. That includes the professional development events within the BCC. So for the rest of this academic year, all of the events that our office hosts, career fairs, workshops, company information sessions, you can all access virtually through Zoom links or through other platforms. So please know that events that are of interest to you are accessible for you to attend. I'm not sure what the fall is going to look like. I'm not sure if it's going to be a hybrid of virtual and in-person events. So keep in mind um, that, that it might look a little bit different, but at least when you transition to the University Park campus, you will be here in person to attend the events. Okay, so on the note of what's accessible to you virtually, we have our website, which has so, so much information that's going to be important for you to know and access as a first and second year student. So first is the information on our events. So like I said before, we have so many events. And if you ever want to see who's coming in any given week, what opportunities are available to you in the future, then you can go onto our website, go into the events tab and check out all of the events we're having and you can find the links to RSVP. Then our website has really great online resources. So if you're looking for tips, handouts, or videos on any career coaching topics, so like I said, interviewing, cover letters, resumes, you can find all of that on our website. You can also find really, really great hiring statistics. So the two that I'll, I'll make note of are number one, our internship database. So this database is full of self-reported data from past students who have completed internships after their junior year. So let's say you are interested in working for Deloitte next summer. You can go into this database, search Deloitte, and you can see some self-reported data on students who have interned with Deloitte in the past. So did they like their experience? Did they not like it? What location were they at? Who was their supervisor? Starting salary? Um, what were they doing on a daily basis? How was the work-life balance? You can find great information about all of that. And then we also have great hiring statistics based on you know, job placement after graduation, job placement after graduation based on your major, um, the percentage of students who do a junior year internship. So a lot of great stuff on that. And then lastly, for resources, there's great info on career options for your major. So let's say you are an accounting student, but you're not sure what type of accounting you're interested in, in getting involved with, and therefore don't know what types of positions to apply for. You can find some helpful information about that on our website. Next is information on SMEAL student organizations. So we house SMEAL student organizations under the Business Career Center and also under our undergraduate education office in SMEAL, but we are involved with them all the time because of the different events that we host, we collaborate with student orgs. So if you're looking for information on that to plan ahead, you can find it on our website. And then lastly, our website also links out to Nittany Lion Careers, which is one of the most, if not the most, important job platform that you will be using as a Penn State student. And we'll talk about that on the next slide. Okay, so Nittany Lion Careers is helpful because it has a variety of functions. And like I said, it's probably the most important platform you'll be using as it relates to your career search. So Nittany Lion Careers, you can actually search for internships and full-time jobs and apply for those positions through this platform. So Nittany Lion Careers is not the end-all be-all when it comes to applying for jobs. It doesn't have every job available to you in every state, in every country in the world. You know, that would be a pretty big platform. We don't have the bandwidth for that. 
But what's nice about Nittany Lion Careers is that it's submission-based. So a company like PNC would send us an email and say, you know, we'd love to hire some Penn State students for an internship this summer. Can you post this um, on Nittany Lion Careers? So then our Penn State students will apply and they'll have that edge already because if companies are looking for Penn State students and you're able to apply through this Penn State platform, then you already fall under this bucket of students, you know, in the target audience that they're looking for. So super helpful in that regard. And then if and when you transition to University Park and we have on-campus interviewing again, I hope we have it again soon, you'll be able to sign up for those interviews through NLC. You can also utilize this platform to RSVP and find information on events. So that would include company info sessions, it could be career fairs, or maybe you even RSVP for the session tonight through NLC and you've already explored that function a little bit, which is great. And then lastly is scheduling a career appointment with the BCC or Penn State BOA. So if you ever wanna meet with me one-on-one -on -one in a Zoom or in-person appointment, you'll utilize this platform. So by default, as a Penn State student, you already have account an account through NLC. Maybe you just haven't gone in and updated your profile and activated it yet. So if that applies to you, I would definitely do it. Just explore, search around so that you're familiar with it before you need to start using it for key functions like applying for jobs and signing up for interviews. Okay, so that is all the information on key career resources. So as a reminder, make some touch points with the Harrisburg campus. And then when you transition to UP, you will have Penn State BOA available to you. And throughout all four years, you have the SNOW BCC available to you. So definitely utilize them as much as you need. Okay, so now we are gonna talk about how to maximize your first and second years. So like I said, I want you all to be as prepared as possible when you make the transition to UP. And that includes doing some things now, doing some things in advance to make sure that you don't have to squeeze two years of career prep into the first two weeks of the fall semester before the career fair start. So let's get started. We have six steps. Okay, so step number one, is get involved at your campus and in your local community. So when we think about the job search at large, ultimately what we're looking for is a job offer, right? So in order to get that job offer, we need to nail an interview. And in order to get the interview, we need to have a strong resume that knocks somebody's socks off and that makes them wanna to talk to us. And in order to have a strong resume, it needs to be filled with great experiences and great skill sets that show that you're somebody who's qualified and well-rounded. So, you know, ultimately we gotta get those skill sets and experiences somewhere. And I recommend doing them through extracurriculars and through work experience, you know, as, as many things as you can get involved in the better. So first and foremost, we talk about experiences. So these are some examples of experiences that you could be adding to your resume. We have stuff like student organizations, volunteering, case competitions, class projects, internships. There really are so many categories and this is not an exhaustive list, but if I were you, I would recommend at least hitting as many types of experiences and getting as many on the resume as you possibly can. That being said, you're not required to hit every box on the screen. That's just not possible with time restraints and you know personal things going on. I know for me, I wasn't involved in athletics because I'm not very athletic. So just do what works for you. But a diversity um, or diversity in experiences is certainly encouraged and welcomed in creating a strong resume. And then in addition to having diversity of experiences, you also want to have diversity in skill sets. So let's say you were able to get all nine of those previous boxes on the screen checked on your resume, that would be great. But if the only skill set that you're gaining from all of them is communication, then you're not really gonna be qualified for that much. We need to have as many skill sets as possible. So these are some examples of skill sets that you might wanna be targeting to get on your resume. We have stuff like computer skills, strategic planning, problem solving, leadership, communication, et cetera. They're really um, unlimited amount of skills that you can get on your resume. But like I said, you know, try to get as many as you can, but also tailor them based on the field that you're going into. So for example, if you're a finance major, then things like leadership, teamwork, and communication are gonna be really critical to show that you are prepared for a career in finance. 
Whereas if you're gonna be going into actuarial science, then computer skills, analytical skills, being detail oriented, those are the things that you should really be putting on your resume and highlighting on your resume. So make it work for you at the end of the day. Okay, so ultimately as a two plus two student, your resume experiences will end by default if and when you transition to the University Park campus. So it's really important to make sure that you're also getting involved when you make that transition. And so what I recommend that people do is either the spring or the summer before that fall transition, just go onto the Penn State website and, and start getting an idea of what you might want to get involved with. You know, maybe you want to duplicate the experiences that you've been doing at the Harrisburg campus. Maybe you want to get involved in THON because you've already done THON. Maybe you want to do IM sports because you've already done IM sports. Or maybe you want to get involved in new things entirely and have new experiences on the resume. But regardless, I recommend making a plan and just knowing what's out there so that you can immediately hit the ground running. So this first slide is just all about student organizations, simply because a lot of different activities and experiences fall within the umbrella of student organizations. So what I recommend that students do, generally speaking, for student organizations is get involved with three over the course of your junior and senior years. And more specifically, two general student organizations and one SMEAL student organization. So there's a thousand plus general or student organizations at Penn State UP, if you can believe it. There really is something for everyone. And if there's not something for you, then you can start your own club. But I recommend getting involved in two and they can either showcase your interests, passions, um, you know, maybe your desire to serve other people. So just some stuff to showcase who you are outside of academics on your resume. Then, like I said, I recommend getting involved in one SMEAL student organization. So that could be service oriented, diversity, we have business fraternities, maybe stuff that's just based on your field or major of interest. But a SMEAL student organization also reflects that you really are interested in the industry you're planning on going into, that you're making, you know, the priority to network and connect with peers. We're also going into those industries. So we have, I think, about 42, 42-ish, depending on the year, SMEAL student organizations. So again, there should be something for you. And if there's not, just start your own. Super easy. Then on this slide, I just wanted to give you some resources, really, just some links that you can access if you're interested in employment at or on, on or off campus, but generally in the state college community during your junior and senior years. So I know for me, I almost always had a job during my time at Penn State. It was something that I needed financially. And also I was just kind of a busybody, didn't like to be bored. So I almost always had a job. And these are the links that were really helpful for me when searching for positions on campus. And certainly if you're looking for positions off campus, it'll just take a quick Google search. But so, like I said, this slide is merely just to give you some info that you can save for later if and when it's needed. So take a picture, take a screenshot, or if you'd like for me to send you this presentation so you can just click on the links directly in the PowerPoint, I'm happy to do so. Just send me an email. Okay, so step number three, create a SMEAL resume. So here within the SMEAL College of Business, we have created what we call the SMEAL resume format. And you can see an example of this here in the blue box on the screen. So the terms or the phrase SMEAL resume format really just describes the way that we have our resume set up and the way that we encourage students to add details and add content onto their resume. So we have created this resume format and we encourage that students use it as a result of feedback from companies that hire SMEAL students. So over the years, we've talked to our corporate partners and they've given us feedback on what they like or don't like to see on a resume, you know, what information is helpful for them or unhelpful, where they like certain things to be located just to make the information more digestible. So we've created, or we've, we've taken all of this feedback and we've created this resume format. So it seems to be pretty successful for our students. Our companies love it. And I always tell students, you know, if this is something quick and easy that you can do to already have that edge in the application process, then you might as well do it. But that being said, if you have a resume and it's in a format that you're confident in already, then by all means keep it. 
I just want to make sure that you have a strong resume regardless, and a strong resume can be in multiple types of formats or templates. So as long as you have it reviewed and as long as you have it, you know, um, without grammatical errors and you have certain content, then you'll be fine. So along those lines, um, if you would like to utilize this meal format, you can find information on the Business Proof Center website. So you can find the downloadable formats, you can plug all of your information in, you can find videos and handouts with tips, samples, stuff like that. And like I mentioned before, just as long as you get your resume reviewed, you will be in good shape, regardless of what the template or the format looks like. So utilize the Harrisburg Career Services Center, utilize Penn State BOA, utilize the SNOW BCC and get your resume reviewed. Friends and family are great to look for typos, and I certainly respect the opinions of everyone out there, but having somebody whose career services background um, can help you just make sure that the resume looks okay is super important. Okay, step number four, sign up for BA-297. So BA-297 is a one credit elective course that's offered through the Smeal College of Business. And it's all about career planning and strategies. So you can see here on the left in the green box, just some examples of the stuff we go over in the class. So researching companies, how to prepare for a career fair, creating documents like resumes and cover letters, interviewing, building your personal brand. You know, we talk about all of this stuff and more in the class. And it's really just to give you foundational knowledge that you're going to need for the career search processes that happen your junior and senior years. So if you feel like you need to refine some of these professional skill sets or you need some extra encouragement to complete some of these documents, then I definitely recommend taking this course. So it is available to students at the Commonwealth campuses and students at the University Park campus. So if you are a Commonwealth campus student and you would like to take it your first or second years, you can take it online in the fall and the spring. And actually we're also creating summer class this summer for the first time. So you can take this class online. It's asynchronous, which is nice. And then if you decide that you wanna take it at UP, you can do that and you can take it in person. So it's available to you all four years, just depending on when you feel it's appropriate to take and um, what format you'd like to take it in. So another thing to mention with this class is that the lectures are taught in combination by business career center employees and corporate partner employers. So you're really getting a dual perspective from two entities who are critical to the job search process. So you're getting great insight. And then if you would like to register for this course, um, the online section that Commonwealth campus students take, you can send me an email. I teach the course so you can register through me. And then if you wanna take it as a UP student, you can just sign up through LionPath. Okay, two steps left. So step number five, attend a career fair. So this is one of the most important things that I recommend that students do their freshman or sophomore years to prepare for the big career searches. So there's four general reasons why you should be going to a career fair early on. And the first is to discover potential opportunities. So speaking for myself, when I was a freshman at Penn State, I had my major picked out and I had an idea of, you know, what that meant for a career path, but I wasn't really sure what types of companies would want to hire me. I wasn't sure what positions would be available to me. And that stuff you can learn about career fairs, really even just by walking around and seeing what company booths are, are propped up. Then number two is learn how to become a highly qualified candidate. So in conversations with employers, you can get an idea of what they're looking for in terms of um, employee qualities, any experiences, any skill sets, uh, making sure you're the right cultural fit. So ultimately, you know, going for that regard is, is super, super helpful in making sure that you're tailing your resume and making sure that you're applying to the right companies when it's time for you to do so. Number three is to build and maintain professional relationships. So career fairs are critical for the networking and networking is is an integral aspect to the job search just because you know networking can help push you along in the application process. It can help you get additional insight or information um, that will help you decide if a company is the right fit for you. So definitely go to network and, and connect with corporate recruiters. And then lastly, familiarize yourself with the environment. So it's no secret that career fairs are a little bit intimidating 
For most people, it's not their favorite thing to do as a student. So I recommend going and just getting comfortable, knowing how it works so that when it's important for you to, um, you know, be there for your junior and senior career searches and be performing at, at capacity, then you'll already know what the deal is. Okay, step number six, our last step, is to sign up for the SMEAL Alumni Mentoring Program. So what's great about this program is that it's available to you as a student to access as a Commonwealth campus student and as a University Park student. So as long as your SMEAL tracking, um, doesn't really matter which campus you're at, you can access this program. So basically the way it works, um, super simple, you just fill out an application, explain what major you're in, what career path you're looking towards, what you're looking for in a mentor, and then you're matched with someone. So the reason I love this program is simply because who better to give you advice about the career search than somebody who's already done it, somebody who's been in your shoes before, somebody who will give you such a great insight about what you can expect in the field, what you can expect you know, in different roles. So definitely recommend this program. You can utilize it for whatever you need it to be, selecting a major, you know, advice on the career search, maybe networking um, with them or with a certain company. So definitely recommend. So those are all my steps, um, my advice on how to my maximize your first and second years. My lasting piece of advice before we go into our alum um, Q&A is to just do your best. You know, at the end of the day, these are not innate skills. Interviewing is not a skill that you learned when you were born. Creating a resume is not a skill that you learned when you were born. Ultimately, you have to learn these things over time. You have to put effort in. So as long as you're doing your best and you're accessing your resources and just preparing in advance, then I promise you will be okay. All right, so we are actually lucky enough to have a Penn State grad. So we're going in this presentation. So we're going to talk with him and get his insight on just the career search and what was helpful to him as a student and as an early professional in the field. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share, pull up our questions, and introduce our friend Bill. Hi, Maria. Hi, Bill. So would you mind introducing yourself and just explaining, you know, what year you graduated from Penn State, what your major was, and then, you know, what your current is within the business field? Sure. Thanks. So hi, everyone. My name is Bill Bailey. I am a 1989. Yes, that means I have a lot of gray hair. Uh, 1989 Penn State finance grad. Um, I worked for 31 years for IBM. I, my last job, I was CFO for about a $20 billion portion of the IBM company. And then a little over a year ago, I, I uh, retired and then started my own business, helping Fortune 500 companies uh, design and implement transformation programs. Um, one of the reasons that uh, you know, I was asked to assist here is that uh, for about 10 years, I ran all of IBM's recruiting for accounting and financial professionals at SMEAL. Uh, and over 150 times, we hired Penn Staters to come work for us, whether it was as an intern, a co-op, or full-time. So I have interviewed easily 1,000 Penn Staters over that period and uh, you know, easily uh, worked with hundreds of students. And, and in the course of doing that, you learn some things that uh, we hope can be helpful for all of you. Great, thank you. That's that's a great introduction. So let's take it back a little bit to your time as a student. So what student organizations or other activities outside of the classroom, any extracurriculars were you involved in when you were a student? So let's start there. Yeah. So yeah, I was very involved as a student. And I would tell you it's 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 really important for all of you to pick one or two student groups that you have a, a real passion or interest in and really get involved in, and dive in. I happen to be on, in student government. I was director of the political affairs department for two years. And I also served on a group that, uh, I forget what you call it now, but back in my day, it was called the Student Organization Budget Committee. And it was the committee that decided how much money 
all the different clubs and organizations received uh, for their programs. Uh, so being a finance person, I thought that would be a good uh, group to get involved with. But the, the thing I wanna stress to you is that all companies that are gonna, you're gonna hopefully be looking to get a job with in a couple of years, definitely are looking for you to show that you've gotten involved at Penn State and progressed up into some leadership in those groups. Um, it's fine if it's business related club or organization, but it doesn't have to be. What we're looking for as recruiters is that you're showing us that you developed your interpersonal skills, your ability to work with others, and your ability to work with others to accomplish a tangible goal or objective. Um, so I would say, you know, while you're at Harrisburg, you should be diving in, picking again one or two groups you really have an interest in and getting involved. And then when you come to UP, uh, similar, similar, right? And, you know, your, your first day in, you know, August of 2022, you're not going to walk in the door and say, I'm here, I'm your president. Uh, you're probably going to start by going to meetings and uh, getting it. But then after a couple meetings, I guarantee you they're going to be asking for volunteers to run this project or do this thing. And if you volunteer, you'll quickly be able to have a chance to kind of shine and show what you can do and then set yourself up to move into a leadership role. I think that's great advice, Phil. That, that makes sense because, you know, you don't necessarily need to wait to be in a leadership position to contribute. You can still contribute and gain skill sets simply as a member by getting involved in committees or volunteering for events. So I think that's great advice. Yeah, you know, Maria, one thing I would add is I can't tell you in all those years of recruiting how many resumes I saw that said member of this, member of this, member of that. And then like any good recruiter, I'd ask a few questions about what they did. And essentially what I would find out is they went to a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not a bad thing, but that probably isn't what most of the, the companies are going to be looking for. That's why I say it's more important to pick one or two groups that you have a real interest or passion in and really dive in. So then when a recruiter asks you about it, you're able to say, you know, yeah, I joined this group. And at first I went to a few meetings. I really liked it. I volunteered to run this project. We accomplished this. And then I ran for vice president. You see the, the logic pattern I'm describing of progression and increasing responsibility. And I can guarantee you that will be very appealing to recruiters. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that insight. And you had mentioned talking to students at career fairs and doing that networking. So looking back on your time as a student, are there any specific networking steps that you took that you think helped you when it came time to secure the internship or the full-time job? I think the number one advice here is, is not rocket science, but it's, it's a phrase we call pound the pavement. Mm -hmm. um, you have to put yourself out there. You have to go to the information sessions that companies are holding. You need to go to the career fair and um, be prepared when you go, have a resume, you know, be you know, ready to talk about what you think are the two or three highlights of your resume. But uh, you know, really it's just being friendly and outgoing and putting in the, the time and effort to go out and uh, interact. And, and look, what I tell people is, you know, you might have 10 interactions and, and nine of them don't yield anything, mm -hmm. but that is success because you only need one. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And I, I, looking back on my time, I was very shy when I was a student and I remember being so nervous to go to any networking events just because I was scared. And and looking back, I feel like that was silly because people host events because they want people to come. So it's not a scary experience in that regard because they want to see you there. People want to talk to you. So I think what you're saying about just being friendly and putting yourself out there, I think is excellent advice. And Maria, we should probably add um, most of the recruiters, not all, but most of the people that come out and recruit at Penn State are people who do it because they have a real enjoyment for it. Like 
when I ran the recruiting, that wasn't my job. I was CFO of a part of the company. It was the job you do on top of a job. And you don't normally volunteer to do that if you don't really have an interest. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so I think most recruiters, I can't promise all, but most and and people, whether they're holding an info session or or a career fair, they're there because they truly want to help uh, Penn State students achieve their goals and dreams, while at the same time helping their company get, you know, smart, hardworking, friendly people to come work for them. Absolutely. So our, my next my next part of that is, you know, you seem to be a very active Penn State alum, which is great. And can you talk a little bit about the value of just alumni mentors to students and how that can help students with their career search and really just when they're out in the field? Oh, absolutely. So I am a member, you know, one of the alumni mentors. Uh, I've been doing that many years. And um, that's really one of the great differentiators of Penn State is the strength of our alumni network and the strength of alumni really wanting to help the next group get a leg up. Uh, You know, the fact you're working with an alumni doesn't mean they're going to give you anything and nor would any of us really should want to be given but it does mean they can open doors for us and they can really help us learn from experiences they've had so that we can maximize our success. You know, with my mentees, we typically met once a month on a, uh, we use Zoom uh, or WebEx to do a virtual so we could see each other and talk. Um, and then when I was on campus a couple times a year, we would have lunch and, and catch up. And our relationships, you know, not all of them click as strong as others because people have different personalities, but most of them really clicked well. And then the students would ask me questions on a whole variety of subjects. But knowing they had someone who had been, you know, through a corporate career and knew both, saw things from both sides, I think gave them a, you know, a real comfort. This is someone they could talk to, no risk, no penalty. Uh, and, and get some hopefully uh, helpful perspective. Yeah, thank you. That's great. And it's nice It's nice to get the perspective of somebody who's on the other side of the mentor program, you know, just speak so highly of it. So like I said, everybody, definitely encourage getting involved with that because what better advice than from somebody who's already been through what you're going through? Okay, so next question I have for you is along the lines of academics to some extent. So what advice would you give to a current student who's unsure of what major to choose and as a result, what career path to pursue? Ooh, I don't remember you prepping me on that one, Maria. I got <laughs> <laughs> I think Maria <laughs> snuck a, a curveball in to make me think a little. <laughs> so, you know, um, what, what jumps to me is, is first off, um, internships give you a chance to try different things to help you figure that out. So for example, uh, in finance, where I come from as a finance major, uh, you know, there's, there's typically three paths. There's, let's call it the Wall Street investment banking or um, you know, hedge fund type path. There's commercial banking, every you know, regional and large bank in the country needs people to do underwriting and to do um, loan you know, portfolio management. And then there's corporate finance, which is the path I ended up choosing. But you know, when I started at Penn State, I thought I was gonna be an investment banker having grown up here in the New York area where I live now uh, on Wall Street. And as I started taking classes and saying, oh, this corporate finance thing might be pretty interesting. And then doing uh, an internship and a co-op, it helped me kind of figure that out. So my my first response, Maria, is take advantage of the internship career and co-op opportunities, Mm -hmm. even if it's maybe what you don't think you want to do, because it's going to help you realize, wow, maybe this is okay. Or it might Mm -hmm. help you say, oh, yeah, I was right. I don't want to do that. So (laughs) so that's one thought. Um, Second is use your alumni mentor, Uh, you know, use people who can help you better understand what a day in the life is like. Um, Go to those corporate events. Uh, When I, again, ran recruiting for IBM, we used to do a day in the life and I would bring 
uh, Penn Staters two, three years out of school and have them talk to the students about what their, their day or week was like. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of companies do that. So, you know, look for those sort of things. So you're really just trying to get lots of information, both practical and, and from others to help you figure out the right path. Uh, and then the last point I'll make is, you know, just because you start on one path doesn't mean you're going to end there. I mean, I, I was a finance CFO, but then I, uh, at one time I ran an IT function with a thousand people and about 40 mission critical applications budget around $80 million. Uh, then I, I ran a, an operations group. Um, and I found, you know, doing some of those other things made me a better professional. And then I, I took some COO type roles. So a finance person going more into a, a line role. So, you know, what you do will evolve over time. Uh, and uh, to help you pick the, the what you hopefully is the best thing to start, I'd say, use the internship co-op opportunities and all the corporate involvement at, at Penn State to help you figure that out. I resonated with everything you just said. That's exactly how I went about it when I was a student. I started out as a criminal justice major at Penn State, and I did a summer internship after my freshman year in juvenile probations. And on the second day, I went home and I changed my major in line because I knew I was in the wrong place. I stayed with the internship because it was a great experience, but sometimes those tangible experiences are really what help you to decide, hey, I'm in the right place or, oh my gosh, I'm definitely in the wrong place. So that's great advice. And then the last question that I have for you is looking back on your time, it seems like you did everything right, but is there anything that you wish you would have done differently to or prepare you for the working world or, or really the job search process? Well, you're, you're far too kind and it sounds much better <laughs> than it really is. So, you know, as any college student, I, I'm sure I, I, I know I made uh, plenty of mistakes. Um, and even now, you know, in my career as an executive, uh, what I used to tell people that work for me is my goal every day is to make more good decisions than bad decisions. Good which, advice. Which, which basically meant that I made bad decisions every day. Uh, if you're making lots of decisions, no one's going to get them all right. Um, but I would say in my Penn State time, um, probably the thing I didn't do as much of as I should have was the networking, was like I didn't have an alumni mentor. Uh, I, I really didn't go to too many of these career nights or corporate information sessions. And, and uh, you know, I probably should have. Um, mm -hmm. And, and so I would say it all, it, you get out of life what you put into life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes you stumble into this great opportunity, but I, I'm generally a believer that you make good fortune with hard work. And, and in the case of hard work, it's in this context, it's, you know, going to those, you know, I'm tired. It's six o'clock, 6.30. I was up for an eight o'clock class. It's a long day. I was up till midnight or later last night getting stuff done. And, Am I going to put on a nice shirt and jacket and go over to, or, you know, to that information session? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would say, you know, as much as you can, we're all human. We have days or nights. We just don't want to do it. But as much as you can, throw that jacket and shirt on and go over there because you just never know when that one situation is going to change your life. Yeah, I think that's excellent advice that is something I, I would certainly agree with, you know, reflecting as you were talking, I was reflecting on my professional life and everything that I have, my job, my accomplishments are all a result of saying yes to opportunities. So I completely agree with that. Okay, well, those are all the questions I have for you, Bill. So thank you so, so much for sharing your insight. You know, I think my information is hopefully helpful, but your information is extremely valuable because you've been there. So thank you. Well, I think we got a good team here. So thank you as well, Maria. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. You can unmute yourself. You can also put them in the chat. That's for Bill or for myself. But otherwise, if you need anything, you know where to reach me. Please, please feel free to reach out at any point in time. I'll jump into drop-ins as soon as this presentation is over. And I hope you have a great 
Uh oh, I see so somebody said they're a little overwhelmed. That's okay. This stuff yeah. is overwhelming. It's a lot all at once. And that's why we try to break it down into steps. So you take bite sized pieces. So, yeah. so you take, um, I would remind you, Rome wasn't built in a day is a very famous phrase. And uh, if, if I think that our main goal here is not to say, oh, you should have all these things done. It's more to say, make sure you have a list and that the, the list includes being involved on campus throughout your four years, um, you know, going to information sessions and things that are out there to learn, uh, working to get an internship in co-op. Uh, and we would say those, those, and obviously, you know, make sure you take care of your classwork. But those four things are the, the recipe that will give you the most opportunities. But like any good cake, it, it, it takes time to bake it. So, mm -hmm. so don't feel overwhelmed or stressed. Just feel that you're following the steps now in the recipe we've given you. And I'm highly confident if you keep uh, doing it and put it in the oven that the cake that comes out at the end will, will taste really good. Yes, absolutely. And you have people that are here for you if you need help. So you are allowed to be overwhelmed, but you are not allowed to not ask for help. So please, please reach out to us, okay? All right. Well, if no other questions, then hope everyone has a great day or night, depending on your time zone. I will hopefully be able to meet you in person at some point at the University Park campus. Let me know if you need anything.